Jules as well as uh, Robbo and Shaka. Jules, you've been uh, studying all the permutations here. We know there's some uh, big injury concerns, lineup decisions looming for Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. Your homework was to come up with what you thought would be Manchester City's 11 for this match <laughs> on Tuesday. Where are the big decisions? Where are the big pressure points right now for Pep Guardiola? Well, the big one has to be a right back because Joao mm. Cancelo is suspended to start with. And then Kyle Walker hasn't trained uh, today, uh, hasn't trained for a few days now, like John Stones. Uh, actually, a bit longer for John Stones, who could, I guess, technically and potentially be an option at right back, which means that Pep Guardiola, right now, as we speak, and they will make a decision on Tuesday morning before the game to see if maybe they risk Walker, if he's only 50% fit or if he's completely out, same for Stone. So we've put on the team that you see on the graphic, Nathan Ake, uh, Nathan Ake, sorry, uh, right back, despite being a centre-back and a left-footed one, but simply because with Zinchenko, Laporte and Diaz, this, this, they are the, the four defenders that Pep Guardiola right now, who are fit, the only ones that he mm. has. So it's not ideal and Walker or Stones might end up playing, of course. But right now, this is, this is what the team looks like, certainly defensively then, you know, there could be crazy ideas like a Fernandinho option at right back or whatever he, Pep wants to do. But right hmm. now, this is the most likely if you take out, obviously, Walker and Stones. Robert, what do you make of that 11 that we just saw from Jules? Yeah, it's a big problem, the, the defensive side, because if he's fit, Walker has to play because I think he's got that pace to, to, uh, to play up against Vinicius Junior. He'd be a good in 1v1 situations. I think he's their best defender at times, Walker, getting forward and backwards. Uh, and Nathan Aki playing on the right-hand side would be a slight problem for him because he's very much left-footed. If Walker plays or Stones plays at right-back, then Ake will go to left-back and Zinchenko will probably come out the side. Uh, but I agree with Jules with most of the other players. Mares has to play because he's been exceptional when he has played. He's scored the most goals. He's a real threat to give width out on the right-hand side. And Jesus, after his four goals against Watford, will probably get another chance. Shaka, we always hear the narrative about Pep Guardiola overthinking in these yeah. situations. With all the moving pieces here, is there a danger of that on Tuesday? I think there's always a danger with Pep Guardiola overthinking, and we see it in the Champions League in the past. And until he just puts his, his or who he thinks is his best 11 out there and allows them to play the kind of football that we, we know they can, we'll con continue to accuse him of, 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 of doing that. Um, but he has so many options. He has so many options all over the park that he can chop and change and not really lose an awful lot. And, and the big difference, as, as everybody pointing out, coming into this one is defensively. And given the, the threat that Vinicius Jr. poses for, for Real Madrid on that left-hand side, the one position that you do not want to be guessing at, and Pep Guardiola has to, is that right back. All right, so that's the Manchester City perspective. What about the Real Madrid perspective? Jules, we had you come up with what you think Carlo Ancelotti will use uh, as his 11. Some big doubts there as well with Casemiro and Alaba. Mm. Walk us through this. Yeah, so we, uh, it looks like Casemiro and suddenly what we're hearing is that he won't be fit enough to play uh, and to start tomorrow. So we've put a midfield of Valverde, Modric, Cruz and Camavinga. I suspect Camavinga will be the replacement for Casemiro. So play a bit more centrally and maybe, maybe Cruz a little bit wider if you want onto the left hand side and that triangle with Mendy and Vinicius Jr. And Valverde on the right in a, almost a hybrid midfield because we, as as we saw against Chelsea, for example, and, uh, and in other games to the season, Valverde can almost play as a right winger when Real Madrid have the ball because he's got those qualities. And then when they don't have the ball, you go back to a, a more solid 4-4-2 formation, for example. So that's the midfield. And then defensively, there's obviously the big question mark over Alaba. Mendy has passed fit, so it won't, problem, won't be a problem there. Militao, the same. Carvajal, obviously, in Courtois. But Alaba is the other one. He might not, again, be fit enough. And in that case, Nacho would start. Nacho, mm. who is the, uh, you know, the replacement. We saw him uh, replacing Militao, for example, for the second leg against Chelsea. Uh, but they're still, they were still hoping tonight that Alaba would just about be being fit enough to play and start the game tomorrow. Chuck, on yesterday's show, we were looking at the uh, odds mm -hmm. for this semifinal between Manchester City and Real Madrid. I was kind of surprised to see just how big the gap was. I mean, the odds makers really seem to, to see City as a huge favorite. Robbo, let's get some picks. I'll start with you. First leg score and who's going to advance? 
Uh, I think Man City will win over the two legs. I think they're going to win the first leg by two goals to nil. I think they've just got that little bit more quality than Real Madrid. We know Real Madrid keep coming back and keep, uh, even when they're in adversity, come back and find a result. But I think it might be a game too far for them. I think Man City will win and they'll win two nil at home. Mm. Jules? Yeah, I think it will be a City win 2-1 because obviously Kareem the Dream is going to score <laughs> inevitably. We all know that. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I do agree with, with Robo in the sense that I think there's a time where it was not luck against PSG and Chelsea, but they, they did ride the luck a little bit. And I think there, there might be a point where that, that stops. OK, Shaka? Uh, I'm with Robo, 2-0 in the first leg. I'm going to go Kareem the Dream to score in the second leg. OK. So I'm making my prediction now. You'll probably have to remind <laughs> me when, when the time comes. So 2-0 this one. 2-1 to City in the second leg. But like I say, you know, remind me, please. I'll, Do you I want to try it. that Kareem the Dream again? It wasn't quite as enthusiastic as what it, I was it, 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 it won't be. <laughs> it will never be. Let's move on. OK, let's move on. Uh, ESPN FC available for you seven days a week here uh, on ESPN+. Plus. We will, of course, be back on Tuesday with full reaction to that first leg between Manchester City and Real Madrid. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.